Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming. My name is Hollow and we have some proper Diablo 4 news to talk about. As I record this, the patch notes for patch 1.3.2 are now revealed and we now know that this patch will actually be dropping on February 13th. We might not be getting the gauntlet, but we'll get this patch. It includes a few different important topics that you will absolutely want to know for your own gameplay from here on in future seasons too, so let's dive into it and other important topics this week. We will begin with the biggest major one, the fact that we finally have uber unique crafting. We had this kind of vague tweet about, hey, hang on to your ubers, we're coming up with a system for them, and this is what we've got. Uber unique crafting, as I did speculate, but how it works, they haven't given us enough information. I love it. Here's the developer note info. Uber unique items are highly sought after. Yep, with Season of Blood, we introduced target farming uber unique items with uber durial to give players another source of acquiring the item type. Yes, this is a great change, but the odds were still miserable. The farming of the actual summons to get durial, miserable. And then farming Duril itself, like even if you had, I don't know, infinite summons, that would just not be fun. Uber Uniques are just too limited. They provide an insane advantage to the people who are ridiculously lucky enough to get them for, say, the Abattoir, and it's only going to be more relevant in the upcoming Gauntlet. I feel that they should be much more attainable than they are now, and this is a step in that direction. So let's continue what they said. However, we want to give players more choice over the desired Uber Unique by addressing feedback that expressed how acquired, duplicate, or undesired Uber Unique items lessens that feeling of triumph. Yeah, with how unbelievably rare they are, and how much of a pain it is to even attempt to get them. The idea of getting a dupe, it's just brutal. You can salvage them, which will provide a new resource that can eventually be used to craft an uber unique of their choice. This is interesting because I was speculating that, you know, would it be an RNG? Consume three ubers, spawn in a new random uber, get another dupe? I would not be surprised if that's what it was, but it sounds better than that. Also, the chance for uber unique items to drop everywhere but in the uber durial encounters has actually been increased yeah actually it's crazy isn't it if you really stop and think the fact that you can get an uber unique from all kinds of sources it technically is possible but it's so unbelievably rare that it remains in that kind of pre-season period where they basically didn't exist you would not get one even if you played the whole season all day every day really i just don't understand the point of that so it's good to see that they've increased that but they've not said the number which might be a follow-up from you know how much it backfired when they said the number for unique stones from Malthus, which were pathetic. Maybe they don't want that kind of backfire reaction again, but to not know the number is also really bad. But hey, it's increased, I guess, so maybe one day someone somewhere will get one. So here's the details. The uber unique items can now be salvaged to provide a new resource, Resplendent Sparks. You can bring five Resplendent Sparks to an alchemist and transmute an uber unique of your choice. So there's no RNG in that. Now, the big question here is five Resplendent Sparks. How many do you get per dismantle? They do not say or even hint in any way how much of that resource you're gonna get per that actual dismantle. They say that they've renamed the actual tab where you will do this. It's now called Transmute tab and we'll be able to find the Uber Unique craft in that tab. It does say that the preview window for crafting an Uber Unique won't display the items or fixes, which feels kind of random, but you know, they're all top roll anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. To say the least then, this is a good change. No one is going to be like, this is a bad change. But I think a lot of people are going to want to know the actual details. How much resource do you get for a dismantle? We're just not going to know until the patch drops on February 13th, and then someone does it and tells us. Josh believes that you'll probably not get more than two, and even then it's very likely you're just going to get one. So that will probably mean, well, it's a minimum of five Ubers before you get the one you want. However, again, it's undeniable that this is a very good thing. Every build, every setup, it has a uber unique that they'd ideally have but the odds of you even getting an uber unique to drop even if you're farming it are very low the odds of you getting the one that you specifically want like the ideal one next to zero are there enough uber uniques that you wouldn't just use that wouldn't be a good thing that you could then dismantle it and make that worth i'm not even sure there is but if you were getting duplicates so two versions of one well then yeah this is undeniably a good thing i just want them to be way more forgiving at very least with duplicates and the resources you get i really hope you get more than one spark per dismantle now beyond that major thing there's just this wall of bug fixes which you might scroll through and go eh, it's all kind of fine not too exciting there's nothing important here but actually, there are a few things you want to know. For example, we have this one. Fixed an issue where only the first person in the party would actually get credit for looting the obelisk whispers. If you aren't aware, there's the new obelisk near 
the braziers where you summon the Vert Malthus guys so we can farm that resource to go fight Uber Malthus. The braziers you open, if it's a whisper, you get credit if you're the person to actually open it. But say if there's someone next to you in your party who watched you open it, they also didn't get credit because person A opened it and not person B. So that's finally been fixed. And actually, I just assumed it had been fixed. We were mainly doing this early in the season when we needed those resources desperately. It's still relevant when you're farming Malthus, of course. So it's a nice change. I'm just, I assumed it had already been fixed. Speaking of which, there's an issue that's been fixed where the arcane tremors in Skosglen and Hezawar could have volcanic braziers that you can't interact with. So that's nice. That zone's actually going to work properly. Here's a funny one. Fixed an issue where attacks from Malthus could still damage players after he's defeated. If you haven't experienced this one, you might have. It's like certain attacks as you kill Malthus might continue if you kill him too quick kind of thing. So the standout ones that happen to us often, it was like the frost circle AOE that hits in loads of different locations. You go over to the chest, that attack continues. You can't loot them without being attacked and it would often kill people not paying attention. Same thing for like the electric stone slams. Really annoying to deal with. You'd have to sort of walk out the room. So that's been fixed. That's good to see. Look at this one. Fixed an issue where enemies killed via an execute effect could not drop blue. That is crazy. Especially when we've got like that new shrine. I believe it's the new lethal shrine in the Lunar Awakening event. It's got an execute effect on it. So essentially by running that shrine, you were nullifying any loot drops to every enemy it instantly executed. And obviously there's other ways you can instant execute things to the Paragon and stuff, but the many mobs you kill, I guess it was stopping them from dropping loot. That is wild. Further, there are things like the Heart of Selig. Sorry, What's that? Here of Selig? The Heart of Selig, uber unique, was not always rolling maximum value for its movement speed affix. This is random. Hopefully that's the case for all ubers because they're all supposed to roll max by default. And another uber unique had a change. The Starless Skies. Fixed an issue where the damage increase and resource reduction cost for the ring of the Starless Skies was not actually calculating properly. Again, really vague. Was it giving you too much? Too little? What actually was happening? What's changed? That's what the patch notes are for. And with how good the style of Skies has been performing for people, is this like a subtle nerf? Was it giving a lot more than it should? We don't know. But yeah, that's the meat and potatoes of the patch. I would say the main things to be aware of. Let us know what you think of this. We're going to find more about all of this uber unique crafting stuff in a few days on February 13th. Now, that wasn't all that was going on in the last few days. The new Lunar Awakening patch launched where we have the new shrines that have all these new cool, interesting effects. And also... XP increases while you have those shrines going. On top of that, we have some new cosmetic rewards if you actually engage with the event. And my favorite addition in the event was actually the new affix you could get on sigils for say a nightmare dungeon or a vault. Ancestral favor would cause an extra 10% XP rewarded for glyph leveling. Not a massive amount, admittedly, but yeah, just extra glyph leveling. Certainly nice when we're preparing for the gauntlet. I would never say no to that. That's awesome. They tweeted that they're actually gonna be buffing the XP boost from shrines up from 50% and they're also changing the glyph XP. They're increasing that. So now the XP you get per the shrine is up to 100% from 50% and then you've got the increased glyph bonus from the ancestral favor sigils. That's 20% increase compared to 10%. So for both, they've doubled them. This is an awesome change. The XP bonus was obviously way too little for a 30 second buff from a shrine, but I do think the glyph XP bonus is a welcome surprise. I was happy with the 10%, but I'll certainly take a 20%. Both of these changes represent the fact that they're aware that it's just not exciting enough and impactful enough. And so they're quickly changing that to improve the event with that in mind. That's really nice. On the other hand, it's also that same question as always of like, why were the numbers so low to begin with? Like say the unique stones you're farming from Malthus, their drop rates were really low to begin with. And then they were like, no one's getting them. No one's enjoying this. Let's increase this. What if we just started with numbers that felt fun right away? Now also with the Lunar Awakening event, there was a bug with the Shrine of Protection. If you didn't know, that's the new one that, yeah, you're still immune to damage, but now you reflect damage, which is pretty cool. But <laughs> dots were going through. So you're immune to all damage except damage over time, which totally could kill you while you're immune. Bit of a funny one. And also the cosmic rewards for the event. If you weren't that class, say you can't use two-handed axes because I'm a necromancer, right? I can't redeem this reward. Or the bow, I'm not a rogue. These are universal rewards everyone gets by engaging with the event, but only specific classes can redeem each one. So you'd need to make a level one of the class that could use it, take it to the stash, loot it, use it, then just delete that character for when you might eventually, I don't know, make a barbarian. I mean, 
mean, it's not like my stash isn't hyper full all the time already. It truly feels like there's one team who kind of gets it and one team that absolutely doesn't and the other team's having to sort of fix things constantly. And allegedly that's how it is with team A and B, team A being season one and three, team B being season two and four. And it just feels like, yeah, there's a clear difference between these two. This says nothing of like the gauntlet being delayed again and the big drama around that. There's this crazy scenario where they had this pre-recorded podcast and they forgot they had this initial official release date, but then they let this pre-recorded podcast go out as if it's current and they hadn't recorded it ages ago. Yeah, I just completely forgot. So they had to tweet about that, but yeah, the gauntlet was delayed again. It's honestly wild. We don't have a proper end game. We're just farming Duriel. So the gauntlet is a really, really important thing right now for a player's end game. We've had season one, we've had season two. It's more than time to give us something like leaderboards and a real system around that. The gauntlet is overdue. The fact that it didn't launch with season three was pretty bitter and a lot of people are upset. The idea that they delayed it again, again, again. Some creators I've heard talk about this are saying you might as well delay it to season four, which is insane to me. I feel like that would backfire even harder than this, but it's not like people are not mad at them already. Still, there are changes coming. We are gradually seeing a better game in Diablo 4. It, it just feels like such a messy way that we get there. In any case, I hope today's news was informative and interesting. Let us know what you think about the different topics today. Until next time then, I've been Hollow. You been you. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye